If you've been following the news lately or honestly if you've just been existing in India for the past few months you've probably heard this term thrown around a lot E20 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 fuel India has introduced E20 petrol adding 20% ethanol emission wise resulting in mechanical damage reduced engine performance engine trouble in older vehicles 20% ethanol dalne ke upar desh mein ek to bhi gaadi mein takrar hai ki aap naam bataiye Ethanol blended petrol E20 India's biofuel revolution. The headlines make it sound like we've either saved the planet or destroyed every car engine in the country, depending on which channel you're watching. And if you're anything like most people I know, you're probably somewhere in the middle, confused. Maybe you've noticed something different the last time you filled up your tank. Maybe your car feels different. Maybe your mechanic mentioned something about this new fuel being made of sugar cane or corn or some other thing. Or maybe you're just tired of people arguing about ethanol on Twitter and want to actually understand what is happening. Trust me, I get it. So here's what we're going to do. We'll figure out what exactly is E20 fuel. Why is India pushing it so fast? What does it mean for you and your car or your bike? And most importantly, is it actually helping the climate or just creating new problems? I am Lavanya and this is the Climate Brief. E20 is simply petrol mixed with 20% ethanol. That's it. Instead of your fuel being 100% petroleum, you know that stuff we pump out of the ground or extract from offshore rigs. Now, one fifth of it comes from something completely different: plants. See, traditionally, everything that powers our vehicles—petrol, diesel, even the aviation fuel that gets planes off the ground—comes from crude oil. This has been the case since the modern internal combustion engine was invented by Nicholas Otto back in 1876. But sometime in the 20th century, scientists figured out something pretty cool. These engines could also run on biofuels mixed into the regular fossil fuels. Ethanol blending is basically taking ethanol, a biofuel which comes from fermenting plant material like sugarcane, corn or rice and mixing it into your regular petrol. Think of it like adding sugar to your coffee, except instead of making it sweeter, you're making it well, supposedly cleaner and more sustainable. Now, here is where the story gets interesting. India's ethanol story didn't begin yesterday. It began back in 2003 with the launch of the ethanol blending program. When the program first launched in 2003, the target was tiny, just 5% ethanol in petrol. For a decade, progress was painfully slow. By 2014 the blend was barely 1.5%. That's almost nothing. By 2018 the government advanced its targets to 20% blending by 2030. Ambitious but still a long way off. Then in 2020 they pushed harder. Target moved up again 2025. Suddenly the clock was ticking faster. By 2022 we'd already crossed 10% blending ahead of schedule and in 2025 the big 20% target was hit 5 years earlier than the original schedule. From 1.5% to 20% in just 11 years, a 13-fold jump. What took Brazil four decades? India pulled off in barely two. So why the rush? Why did the government decide to completely overhaul India's fuel composition in record time? The government says that there are five reasons. One, energy security. India imports about 88% of its crude oil. That makes our entire economy vulnerable to global price shocks, geopolitical tensions, and supply chain disruptions. Hence, every liter of ethanol we produce here is one less liter of petrol bought abroad. Since 2014, blending has saved us over 1.4 lakh crore rupees in foreign exchange. Two, climate goals. Ethanol burns cleaner than petrol, cutting carbon monoxide emissions by 30 percent and hydrocarbon emissions by 20 percent. It is pitched as a step towards India's net zero 2070 target. Three, farmers. For cane and maize growers, ethanol demand means steady buyers. In the last decade, about 1.18 lakh crore rupees has gone directly into farmers' pockets. Four, rural jobs. The Asian Development Bank projects that the EPB is going to create 18 million jobs in rural India. Five, circular economy promise. The government dreams of making ethanol from agricultural waste, taking stubble that's usually burned and turning it into fuel. Its scale 
This could cut both emissions and Delhi's winter smog. We'll dive into these stated benefits and try to understand whether they're living up to the promise in chapter 3. But before that, we get into the part you might care about most. What does E20 mean for your car or your bike? This has been the hot topic on Twitter and in WhatsApp groups. The complaints are everywhere. Reduced mileage, engine performance issues, concerns about long-term damage. There's even a public interest litigation in the Supreme Court challenging the nationwide E20 rollout. Let's separate fact from fear. If your vehicle was manufactured after April 2023, you're probably fine. That's because BS6 Phase 2 norms require all new vehicles to be E20 compatible. But here's the catch. The vast majority of cars on Indian roads today were made before 2023. These vehicles were designed for E10 or lower. And ethanol, it's chemically different from petrol. It's corrosive, attracts water, and it can degrade certain rubber and plastic components over time. If your vehicle was built between 2011 and 2023, chances are it was designed for E10. You might see a small mileage drop, say 2% or 6%, somewhere around there, nothing drastic. Routine servicing and replacing rubber and plastic parts can keep it running fine. However, older cars will face bigger issues. Ethanol can corrode rubber and plastic parts in old fuel systems. Some manufacturers like Hero Motor Corp have already issued advisories on swapping out vulnerable parts. While Honda claim their vehicles have been E20 compatible since 2009. And that brings us to the biggest question of all. Is E20 actually as good for the environment as we're being told? Because when you dig into the details, that story gets complicated. On paper, E20 sounds like a climate win. Cleaner combustion, lower carbon emissions, a renewable fuel instead of fossil petrol. But let's scratch beneath the surface. First, let's do the emissions math. Take a car that runs 15 kilometers on one liter of petrol. For 100 kilometers, it burns about 6.67 liters, releasing around 15.3 kilos of carbon dioxide. Switch to E20. Because ethanol has lower energy density, you burn a little more fuel, roughly 7 liters. But the carbon dioxide impact is different. Petrol in that mix still emits around 12.9 kilos of carbon dioxide. Ethanol adds about 2 kilos more. The net result, around 14.9 to 15 kilos of carbon dioxide. 3 to 4% reduction, which is real, but not revolutionary. And the bigger problem, where the ethanol comes from. Right now, most of India's ethanol is made not from agricultural waste, but from sugarcane, maize and surplus rice. Sugarcane is a water guzzler. It needs 60 to 70 tons of water to grow just one ton of cane. A government study found it takes over 3,600 litres of water to make just one litre of sugarcane ethanol. In water-stressed states like Maharashtra, that means groundwater depletion and farmer distress. But maize and rice? They're even worse. One litre of ethanol from maize requires 4,670 litres of water, while rice needs a staggering 10,790 litres. Moreover, in the last two years, India diverted a third of its maize harvest to ethanol forcing the country to import about 8 lakh tons of corn in 2025. Even rice stocks from the Food Corporation of India are now being diverted. In 2024 to 25 alone, over 5.2 million tons of rice went into ethanol, about 9% of the global rice shipments. So here's the paradox. We are cutting tailpipe pollution by a few percent, but risking groundwater depletion, higher food prices and soil degradation in the process. Israel's Desertification Atlas 2021 found that nearly 30% of India's land is already degraded. Planting more water-thirsty cane for ethanol could make that worse. Now, to be fair, ethanol can still be a climate friend. If second-generation projects scale up, the ones that make fuel from stubble and residue, it could still be a genuine win-win. Less smog, less waste, greener fuel, but as of 2025, these projects are still pilot scale. The reality on the ground is first-generational ethanol. Crops grown on prime farmland, irrigated with scarce water. So is E20 really a climate solution? Yes, but only halfway. It's got potential, but it is not living up to it fully at the moment. It's like a superhero in pajamas. The powers are real, but they haven't suited up yet. I'm Lavinia, and this is The Climate Brief.
If this helped clear the confusion for you, consider subscribing because next week we'll cut through the noise on another climate story that affects you directly.